Hello, I am Yuri Shlipnev, president and founder of Symbian Inc. We develop and distribute Symbior electromagnetic signal integrity software for the electric and conductor roughness model identification and pre and post layout analysis of PCB and packaging interconnects. If you are watching this, you probably know uh, what crosstalk is. A signal transmitted from one component to another may appear at some unwanted locations. But have you seen it? I mean, literally, how power gets from one uh, from the source to the unwanted location? I didn't until today. This demo is an attempt to illustrate the crosstalk process and the traces on the board surface, called microstrip lines. I will investigate one inch segment of two microstrip uh, 12 mil traces separated by 12 mil distance uh, on about 8 mil uh, FR48 dielectric. Uh, each trace is about 50 ohm and the voltage coupling coefficient is about 0 0.12. Uh, uh, that's pretty tight coupling. May be considered as a case of single-ended routing in a connector breakout area, for instance. Signal source uh, will be located at port 1, uh, receiver at, a, at, at the port 3, uh, and the unwanted signal at port 2 uh, will be near-end crosstalk, and at port 4 is fine crosstalk. Time domain response uh, for uh, 20 picosecond Gaussian step looks familiar. This is transmission through from more port 1 to port 3. Uh, this is uh, near end crosstalk and this is far end crosstalk, uh, about five times larger than uh, near end crosstalk. Um, in uh, time domain, the uh, fine crosstalk uh, value will depend on the rise time of the uh, source. So, better way to look at it are S parameters. Here is transmission again from port 1 to port 3. Um, uh, it uh, drops with the frequency. This is um, fine crosstalk from port 1 to port 4. Uh, and um, because of reciprocity, I use kind of 1, 4, 4, 1, doesn't matter. So it rises with the frequency. At some point, it almost uh, the value is almost equal to the transmitted signal, and then it rises further and transmitted signal goes almost to zero. And this is near end crosstalk. Let's take a look at uh, how the power gets um, from the source, uh, port 1 to port 3 and 4 uh, at different frequencies. Here's a power flow at 5 gigahertz. In all cases, um, one volt harmonic signal in series with 50 ohm resistor is used as a source, and all other ports are terminated with 50 ohm. This is a power flow density, uh, normalized to maximal value shown here and animated in time over the period, and expressed is uh, in um, dB. Each arrow. Um, uh, shows direction of power flow and length and color uh, show the value in again in dB. You can see it. If you switch to the bottom, we can see that uh, more power propagate uh, below the strip in the substrate, in the electric substrate. But returning to the subject of uh, the crosstalk, we can see a little bit of power gets into this port 4 and on this scale we don't even see the anything in going on with a port 2. Let's increase the frequency to 25 gigahertz. Now we can see some difference. We can see that the signal actually slowly gets into the second, into vic the victim trace. The trace with the signal is an aggressor and trace uh, that gets unwanted signal is a victim. And we can see that by the end of this segment, almost equal power gets into um, uh, wanted port 3 and fine crosstalk port 4. That's what we observed on scattering parameters at 25 gigahertz, about the same energy, about the same S parameters. 
um, notice they are slightly uh, uh, they are out of phase not slightly uh, maxima and minima they, uh, they go um, through the half of wavelengths here on S parameters if you switch to phase we can see about 90 degrees difference in uh, the transmission and far end crosstalk that's an interesting observation with the power flow so how about 50 gigahertz and switch to 50 now uh, this is our port one again two now we can see that by the end of this segment the aggressor doesn't have signal at all so all signals switch to the victim port three is empty can zoom in and see all the power switches from um, the aggressor to the victim so we can see this observe this process um, so uh, technically if you increase the uh, line lengths uh, 10 times 10 inch for instance we will see the same process as 5 gigahertz if you increase it five times we will see the same process as we observe at 25 gigahertz at 5 gigahertz again so this is um, how practical it is and we'll um, see how it goes later but right here at uh, let's go back to 25 gigahertz um, we can see uh, how the um, actually redistribution energy redistribution takes place and also uh, technically if, if um, uh, wave would be TM then energy would be propagating only along the line but uh, along the X direction something like this you can see that most of it uh, definitely propagates in along the X direction but what about the uh, Y Z direction well you can see fair amount of energy propag propagating sideways so and getting into the victim this is non TM nature of this uh, um, micro strip line What about the near cross talk? Well, we actually have to change scale to see it. It's at the level about 20 minus 20 dB. So um, let's just um, change the scale and try to take a look. So at 25 gigahertz, uh, just uh, increase the resolution. And now you'll be able to see it. Close. So you can see some arrows right here. You can see pointing at the NIN port. So to see it separately, I actually pre-computed uh, values at, let's just take a look at 25 gigahertz in a cross section right here, very close to, to the source. And we can see arrows pointing in the direction of port they actually near crosstalk so why the signal goes into adjacent trace and switch back to 25 gigahertz um, there is a capacitive and inductive coupling explanation and balance between two another explanation is based on the model decomposition signal excited at um, um, at, uh, w in one trace propagates down the line um, and back uh, as a superposition of two waves odd and even to satisfy the termination conditions here and the fine uh, well if two modes would propagate down at the same speed they would arrive at the same uh, phase and everything would be fine but for micro strip lines, the speed is different. The difference here is about 8%. So that's why we observe um, this far end cross talk. 
uh, and that's what causes the uh, effect of the energy redistribution here. But what if the propagation speed is the same? Um, there will be no crosstalk, right? Let's take a look at the strip line segment then. And uh, 5 gigahertz, the same kind of port arrangement and uh, same structure, only in homogeneous dielectrics here. And now we at 5 gigahertz we didn't see much crosstalk uh, at micro strip either, so let's just go to 25. At 25, we don't see fine crosstalk as we saw on microstrip case. But if you zoom in, you'll see a little bit of it. You can see arrows around this strip right here. And, and 50. We can see more fine crosstalk at 50. Not much at the knee and crosstalk. Uh, this is uh, subject for another presentation. Finally, what if we increase the length of the transmission line, as I mentioned, from like two inch, or oh, one inch, it was one inch, sorry, from one inch to five inch? Well, you'll see more crosstalk, fine crosstalk, and much sooner. So you can see it at. Uh, 10 gigahertz here, the, the minima in the transmission and the maxima in the fine crosstalk. Yeah, and crosstalk is almost the same. What about TDT? TDT? Yeah, we see much larger fine crosstalk again. Knee and crosstalk is pretty much almost the same uh, value, and we see some substantial distortion of the wanted signal uh, due to this uh, fine crosstalk. This is the end of this uh, demo. To learn more, visit simbirian.com. Application notes, um, webinars, and knowledge base sections. Or download and try Simbir now. It is available in download section. Thank you.